All right, so I'm going to be having a video now that's going to start up to give you an idea of how to mount your Jeep Liberty roof lights onto a 5th gen Explorer. This will also help if you're mounting it on pretty much any other kind of vehicle and you need to figure out some tips and things like that. This will be done documentary style. I've had mine on now for about a year and it's not leaking and it's working great. Enjoy. So I got a quarter inch that I can use as an extension with a T20 bit. This will help to get the sun visors out. You're also going to need a uh, small one. I think that's a eight millimeter or a seven millimeter. I forget which one. I don't have it here to take off the hand grip. That's on the passenger side. A pry tool would be useful for taking off the plastic that surrounds the visor. We're going to use the Astro Rivet gun, which is a rivet stud gun. I got it with M6 studs, going to need at least six of those. I recommend you get a 10 so that you can have a practice stud as the video will relate to. A drill bit, 10 millimeter, marker, some kind of deburring tool such as a file. Some weather stripping glue would be awesome to help seal everything to make sure that it's watertight. And just some regular uh, tape that you can fold over to make like a double sided tape will help you position everything on the roof and of course what you got to do is uh release the two screws here for your visor the one here for the visor clip on the other side for the visor clip two screws there for the visor you have two nine thirty seconds for your handle and then you want to pull out your sides you want to pull back the rubber here out of the pocket because it basically sits you know inside let me show you it sits inside like that so you're gonna pull it out of the pocket you can pull the weather stripping off if you want to but I can simply just kind of move it out and that'll get your panel to sag there's nothing to hold on to here keep your screws together don't lose them Okay, I usually just keep that hanging down. If I want to relieve the pressure off of the wires, what I'll do is I'll stick it in the hole and then turn it sideways. So to relieve the pressure off the wires, I'll stick it in the hole. And then once I get it inside, I can just turn it sideways and it'll hold on to itself. Basically like that, okay? So you're just sticking it in the hole and just turning it sideways once it gets in there. It's hard for me to do with one hand, it'll be easy for you. And that's of course only if needed, if you have the uh, lights on your visor, which I think that might be a standard thing. And that'll allow you to uh, take some of that pressure off of your cables here. You can also just unplug it by pressing the clip and then pulling it out but uh that just leaves an extra step for me to do later which is not necessary so i like to just push it in and then just let it hang on the edge just like that and that's good enough and same thing on the other side and then that gives me just enough here and all i want to do is one double check that there's nothing in there mounted and two when I go to drill my holes, I don't want to go through the headliner accidentally by forcing so hard. So this will give me an extra few inches of uh, drill drops, so we say. All right. So once you get it just enough, see that bar right there? That goes all the way across the top, see? So basically, if you were to come up to the roof line, and if I were to go from this edge of the roof line, is what I'm called, talking about, and go straight down and look up, you can see that's where these pieces are. That's why I set it off of that roof line, because the screws are not gonna be on that edge, but I wanna keep it away from that edge. And I don't want to mount it down here, which would be technically more appropriate because 
of all of that to have to work through. And as you can see, it's clear all the way across. So that's a great place for mounting. And that's why I've chosen that position, okay? All right, so if you have the authentic, what you wanna do is unplug this clip. The thing is, it's got a safety tab on it. So when it's locked in position, this would be pushed down. What you gotta do is you gotta get up under there, there's a tab that you gotta pull over to the side. Now, one easy way that I found is if you have this as a factory, which has the two pins and pull, this whole thing will slide off. So very carefully slide it forward and it'll slide out. Be careful because the wires are short and on the edge, so you just want to slide it out. Of course, I'm doing this with one hand, so it'll be a lot easier for you. Here, let me use so chance here on the phone. Slide it out. Once you slide it out, you'll be able to turn it over and you can see underneath. Now again, if this is all the way in, that little tab right in the middle is what you want to move over in this direction. When you move that over in this direction, it'll be able to push that down and that'll allow it to separate. So uh, very hard for me to do with one hand, but I think that gets the principle. You can see right there, it's that little tab. So that middle tab, slide it over. If you're looking at it this way, you're sliding it over to the right, which gives you clearance. It unlatches it so that it can push in. It, you don't need to pull it all the way out. You just need to pull it so that this red is not visible on the edge. And then you can push this in or squeeze it. If you're holding it like that, you're basically squeezing it to separate it. Okay. All right. So I've slid it over. As you see, I slid it over and that allows me to push it in. So I'm just pushing it in so I can't see it. I don't need to pull it out. And now I can just squeeze it and separate it just like that. And I can put this back on so that I don't have to worry about trying to get the angle to put it back on once I have it mounted on the, once I have it remounted back on the vehicle. So that just kind of goes back into, you can see the grooves right there. So you want to put that back together into the grooves slide it back onto its little base. Hold on, show it to you. There we go. So putting it back into the grooves and then pushing it back onto its base. Okay. I only have one edge on, so you wanna double check it, make sure you slide it so that both channels are in. You can see that really well, both channels are in so that you can tilt it and then slide it on. Okay. Now when you're looking at the lighting unit without the top on it, see these little divots here, here, there's a couple in the front, and then also here. When you turn it upside down, you can see those divots. Those divots is how the housing locks on in the front. So if you're looking at your lights, and I'm gonna turn it upside down, you can see, okay? So I'm gonna match it up, I'm gonna line it up pretty good. It's got one here, which slides into there. One, two here, slides into there. So this is what helps to line it up. So what you wanna do is you wanna kind of put it together, making sure that you get it inside of those grooves, okay? So easiest way to do that is I like to tip it in first to line it up and then it lines up, it goes in. When you have it fully mounted properly, this will squeeze together, okay? Just like that. And then the corner one as well. If you have these lined up properly, when you go to mount this, the screws will go in properly. Just the ones here, and then the one on this end as well. See, right in that corner. All right. Now I'm not gonna put the screws in because what I'm also gonna be doing is I'm using this as a guideline. Now that I see with this fully mounted properly, I've got less than a finger's thickness from let's say the corner to the edge, okay? From the corner of the bracket, let's call it, 
to the housing, let's call it. Now, less than a finger's width. So if I were to put my finger on the edge of it, like that, it's about there, okay? If I were to give it a little bit more room, meaning like this, that's, a, that's an okay thing. So it's a little bit more than my finger's thickness. You check and see what yours is. If I were to guess it, I'd probably say that's about maybe a half an inch, all right? So knowing the corner a half an inch there, I'm also looking at here, this distance. And I wanna get a firm measurement to use. So that when you have this on the top of your roof, you're able to determine that from here is going to be a good even point and here is going to be a good even point to make sure that one, before you drill your holes in your roof, if you're going with the, uh, the technique that I'm going to be showing you today, that everything is proper. But number one is making sure it is inside of those grooves before you flip it over, okay? So now I'm just going to carefully flip it over and this would be a proper mounting position. I'm gonna clean up these lights a little bit later, okay? While we're here, so uh, just get it out of the way now. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back off. And I wanna show you, don't worry that on a Jeep Liberty that these lights are on the edge of the roof line right at the windshield. And on whatever vehicle you're mounting it, if you're mounting it on if you're mounting it on the Explorer like I am, these lights are adjustable as far as the angle position to go that way and that way. And the way that's done is back here, okay? So you can see, you can stick your tool inside, the star, probably a 25 I'm guessing, and that's the adjustment screw. So you'll be able to adjust up and down all four of your lights. And that's really awesome because it allows you to have something personal for how you want these to operate, as well as allows you, in our case, to put it on other vehicles besides just the Liberty. Okay, so that's just something I wanted to show you. So that's what we call a uh, bonus things, that these are adjustable, you can see it's on the little piece right here and it could twist up and down. Right now it's not moving because this screw holds it in place really well, um, which of course is what you need. And um, it's just like a regular headlight on your car, how it would have an adjustment pin. And the pins are on, when looking at it from the back, the pins are on the right hand side of the bulb housing on each one. It's on the right hand side. All right. All right, so what you wanna do is line it up to where you want it on your vehicle. In the Explorer place, I'm gonna line it up just on that roof edge. So you can see the edge coming here. I wanna get that just on that edge. And it's gonna barely touch your trim as well, okay? And I wanna make sure it's that way on both sides. The base is underneath there and the housing is on top so again I want to make sure that it's lined up with my roof line you can get a helper with this will help you out so you can do both sides at the same time and it's barely touching it so that's my alignment setup now what I'm gonna do and you can do this too to help you out is now that I know the position I want it in, I am going to double check that underneath it's connected. So when I lean it forward, as though I'm properly gonna mount it, that's gonna push it back a little bit. Because right now, as you see, it's not hooked. Okay, you can see the little edge there, it's not hooked. So to mount it, it's gonna be going forward and it's gonna be coming back a little bit more. So me putting it right at that edge is perfect. In mounted position, it's gonna be back maybe less than a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, that's perfect for me. So me putting it at this point is aligning the base perfectly where I want it. And when I go to lift this off, I'll be very careful not to move that base. Now you can add a double sticky tape. I wouldn't use a thick one because you're gonna to have to take that off and it's gonna mess up your balance. 
that double sticky tape is basically a, a piece of tape, you know, folded over upon itself backwards to help do it in position. And that's it. So I've got it right on that because I know if I lift this up, now this side was hooked in there. So that was pretty good. Okay, so what I'm doing, you can see I'm pushing it back to make sure it's hooked and I know where my base is, okay? And I can see my line. So I can see that this has a little room that I can go forward with. And now I've got it hooked on my base. I can feel it. Let me get that uh, in focus for you. I can feel it hooked on my base and I push it back to the body line. And if I try to lift up carefully, lightly, I can feel it's hooked on there, okay? And it's right where I want it barely on the edge of that so I'm gonna slide this over because I know the other side more than likely is moved that's why it's good to have it with somebody else helping out so you can do both sides at the same time and don't have to worry about it uh, having to go back and forth and back and forth because you move one the other on the opposite side is gonna move as well so again I'm gonna hook it so that I know it's on the edge See, if I were to lift it up now, the whole thing's gonna lift up, so I know it's hooked. I'm tipping it and hooking it from where I showed you, and I'm putting it in position. I'm gonna do the same double checking, and I'll keep double checking that. With a partner, you'll be able to do it easy enough. By yourself, it's gonna take a little while. You're gonna go back and forth a few times. You wanna make sure it's where you need it so that when you lift it off, the base will be exactly where you need it. So, got one side lined up. I got a partner to help me out. Hi guys, it's me, Chris, from Kids Perspective. I'm helping out. All right, cool. So he has his own channel. That's a kidsperspective.net, which links to his YouTube channel. He works mainly with the uh, Ford Escape. Yeah, like, what was it? 20... 2012. 2012, 2010, 2011 Ford Escapes. Anyway, so, um, He's helping me out with my project because he likes the idea. So I'm lining it up, see here, needing to push it back. Now I have that thing where I'm tipping it, you know, because it's underneath there. So I'm tipping it so that, uh-oh, when I grab it, I can feel the whole base moving. And now I'm pushing the whole base back and getting it right in position on the corner. How's the other side looking? It's, I think it's about there. On the corner? So that corner is right at the edge? Yeah. Yeah? All right, cool. You let your side go, I let my side go. All right, we're on the edge. Let's go around and check it out on the other side. Looks good. Uh oh, sorry about that. And it's on the edge, so that's perfect. So that's what we're gonna do. So now knowing how I want it to fit, I'm gonna use a double-sided tape trip to hold the base in place so that when I lift off the housing cover, the base will stay pretty much in the position that I need it to be in. Will you hold this for me, sir? So, we're gonna take here. I'm just gonna use regular packing tape. I'm basically gonna take it, fold it over upon itself, and this will be my double-sided sticky tape effect. And that's what I'm gonna put underneath on the base, okay? All right, cool. All right, so now with it lined up, yes, it's sagging forward, but I can tell when I slide it back barely where the base is. And I've got that double-sided tape holding it in place. I can tell it's hooked. Double-sided tape is holding it very well. Now we're, I'm just gonna slide it forward and lift it up. Sorry, slide it forward and lift it up so I can leave the base behind and take off just the housing. Good, good. Good. So what I'm doing is making sure I don't move my base. Your technique can work as well. Don't use the 3M double sided, especially if it's more than a mil thick, because um, when you go to mount it, you don't want it to be higher than it needs to be. Okay? So I can feel, I'm double checking before I lift it up. I'm pulling back. So here, you can see I'm going back. As I lift up, I can feel the resistance that it's on the base and it's right on my line where I want it. And let me get that focus for you. It's right on my body line where I want it. And in that gap where I want it as well. So I'm gonna pull it forward to get it off of the hook. 
and then just lift it out. Will you do the others? Actually, hold on. Hold this one for me. Just put your fingers underneath the there. Perfect. So we're gonna hold one side, and I'm gonna go forward and do the same on this side. Perfect. So now that is the mounting position. How to double check that this has not moved and to be sure that you do it straight. Very easy guys, very easy. I'm gonna get my step ladder. Remember that measurement we did earlier? That's what we're gonna check. So you can take a measurement from your corner to your edge. Make sure you're straight and straight following this body line of your housing to the edge of there. Make sure that's the same on both sides. Make sure that point is the same on both sides and you'll have a nice even place. And then I'm gonna get a marker and I'm gonna mark my holes so I can do my drilling. All right, now that I've got my measurements equal on both sides where I want it, I'm gonna mark my holes. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it completely. You're gonna have six holes basically. And this is gonna allow me to, by marking it completely, have a full circle that I can make sure that I mount my rivet screws in. Okay, I got this side done. Let's get the other side done. Looking good already, right? Wiring is pretty straightforward. So for this one, doing good. I'm basically holding it straight up and down into place. Also, I'm doing these with 10 millimeters for the size that I'm gonna be using. Right here, it's 26 millimeter. Okay. And then right there, the last one. Okay. So I'm gonna put my pieces in the middle. So that's one, two, three. four, and then five, six, seven from the other side. Total of seven holes you'll be making. Six of those holes will be the small ones for the threaded screws. All right, so have everything in place. I double checked, I marked my holes. Now you can feel this resistance of the sticky tape. And there's my template for where I'm gonna drill. In the middle, in the middle, in the middle. 26 millimeter and then on the other side in the middle, middle, middle again. And that's gonna be able to allow me to get my screws. And I can see now as well, and I was able to see this before, but from where, let's say this is the closest hole to the front. If I were to go straight down to look inside, it should not be in the way of this. It should be right on the edge if I determine, like very close to that edge, so which would be perfect for getting these mounted. All right, let's put these holes in. So I'm doing this right in the middle. So if you're marking, let's say for example, on this one, which has a little, a line there, you wanna put that mark right in the middle. You can set it with a pin if you like, you know, do the little hammer. But remember, this is a flexible roof. When I did this one, I set it right in the middle and then just held it nice and straight and drew it straight down and in, okay? So you want to do that to your holes. All right, I've done my first three mountain holes and checking it from inside. Perfect, nicely far away 
And just like I was saying here, where is it? Ah, sorry about that guys. There it is. So now I'm gonna clean up those edges. Basically take off the burrs. That way it'll be ready for my rivet studs. So that's my first three in their perfect position. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I'm doing these holes. It's real simple. I'm using the even pressure, so I'm gonna show you how I do this one and uh, that one. So basically, I'm gonna keep it right in the middle. Keep it straight, apply even pressure, and just do a little pulse. That sets it, so that's equal to doing it with a, a punch setter. And see that little dip that just happened? That's why I take down the headliner so that I have a few extra inches. Now we're gonna do the other hole the same way. Got it lined up perfectly in the middle. And I'm just gonna do a little pulse. That's gonna basically set it so that it doesn't track, but I'm gonna keep it straight. And there we go. I'm gonna go underneath and do these with some uh, deburring to help take out, sorry about that, to help take out the edges of the metal. So I'm gonna deburr these holes from underneath, which also is a good benefit that the headliner's out because you want that to be nice and flat underneath so that when the rivet pulls it, it's a nice even securement, all right? All right, so holes are set for the mounts. I've got them in position. Basically, that's a 10 millimeter hole that I'm using. Squeeze that out. 10 millimeter hole done with the drill. And then I'm using the pull up stud or rib stud. They have a regular rib bolt, but the rib bolt doesn't have the stud. So that's why this kind of goes by a bunch of different names. I'm also using a little rubber washer to help for sealing and um, after deburring the hole basically get it nicely and snug into place pull it down like that from underneath you see them sticking out you can make sure that they're pulled under and through from underneath that's no problem at all to do that so again this is what I'm using now, these are hard to find, but what you're gonna look for, if you wanna use the bolts that came originally, you wanna go with the M6. Now, since I pulled my unit from a junkyard, I was able to use the original nuts and keep them with me. And this is what came off of it at the junkyard, which made me know that, hey, these are pull-up studs. These are M6, which is the stud size, 15 stud. Now, you can get one that's a little bit longer, which gives you more grip range, which would be awesome, okay? Because your grip range on this one is just barely that much, which is not bad, because what we're working with is thin metal. And then, of course, you're gonna use a pull-up stud or rivet stud gun, which I'm using the Astro 1455, which is a stud setter kit. I got this off of eBay. You can also find it on Amazon. Um, if I remember correctly, it's about $75. So it's a tool like this. Now, here's the cool part. This, when you buy it, you wanna make sure that it's a kit and not just the tool. So don't buy it secondhand. Buy it as brand new in a kit and it'll come with a nice variety of pull-up studs. The only problem is, let's say the M6, there's only five of them. <laughs> so you won't have enough because you're gonna need six to do your holes uh, like how the factory had it. So you only have five. So then you have trouble finding one more. But then again, if you really don't care, you can use five of the sixes and then maybe use the smaller one like a one quarter or or maybe a 1024 or something like that. In other words, one screw will be different than the others. Uh, who cares if you're doing it, right? So anyway, um, this is what I'll be using to rivet in my studs 
And also, I'm using the washer. Now, I got this, if I remember correctly, from, I think I got it from like a, a, a regular hardware store. So this brand is by Everbuilt and it's a neoprene washer, a 3 8 inch, which will fit perfectly over the little hole. Um, this is a three pack, so I got two of them. They're about uh, $1.50 or three bucks or something like that for the pack or for the two packs. And um, that's what I'm using to go in between so that I can have an extra seal. Now they're a little bit thick. If they were thinner, that would be awesome. But what I really wanted was like a PVC because a factory one uses a little PVC washer in between and it's super thin. But since I couldn't find a small thin PVC, this is the thinnest I can find for this size, which is a 3 8 to go through the back end of that uh, nut, that rivet stud I should say, not nut, and uh, that's why I chose to go with that. But it's okay because with it in place, you still got a little bit of grip range. And also this is gonna give as it gets tighter and it's actually gonna make it a little bit better for seal. I'm also gonna uh, seal this up using some weather strip, which is similar to what you use around the uh, windshield and stuff like that to uh, totally make sure that there's no leak. I doubt if there's gonna be a leak when I get done with it because I'll have this properly sealed pull-up stud. I have the neoprene washer in between and I'm gonna have some of this uh, 3M Auto Advanced Super Strip, Super Weather Strip adhesive. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the underside of it which will help to for sure make a nice sealed bond with it. So that's what we're gonna put on next. Let's go to that. So we've got the M6 put on which works for this we're using the uh, 1455 Astro. So basically you wanna open it up you're going to set the screw in place and then it's adjusting also down here at the bottom so you can make sure that there's no gap in between and then it's loaded and ready to go and then you're going to put it in your sheet metal and close this now what i recommend is when you buy these studs get a few of them um, you need six i recommend buying minimum ten so that you can experiment and play with it what i want you to do so that you can get a feel of how much force you need without over stripping watch it and then you can feel the force that it takes to pull that into position and see how that's a little bit on the edge so now you can kind of tell if you need to now this would be when you look at it from the inside and you can see that it's not completely flat and gripping so you can tighten it a little bit more if needed There's also an adapter on here to set it at a longer height. That little ring is the adapter. And what I'm gonna do here is set it so that it's higher up, like that. And that way, when I pull it completely, now I see that little edge coming down on it. Go a little bit more on it. So I'm gonna open it up. And this is basically why I say you want to get a couple of extra because you want to know that you have the right set. So my goal now is to get that to go flat as well as I do it in. And I think that's going to be about the best that it's going to do at this point because it's already kind of buckled under. And inside of the metal is going to give it that extra little tuck in there which will probably allow that to flap over. So I'm gonna say that this is fairly successful and now it's adjusted perfectly and I know how much force I need to go ahead and pull that off. So let me go ahead and take this out now. So I'm gonna open it up, unscrew it from the back end to get it out. And you can see how much more thread it is because now it's been collapsed. So now let's go ahead and do this on the car. So this one, we're gonna already have the bushing on it. I'm gonna get it ready by opening it up opening it up, screwing it in to set. I'm gonna push it all the way in, nice and hard. And as I'm squeezing, I'm also gonna push it close or bring it close. I'm gonna make sure 
And now before I take it off, I'm just gonna check it from the other side. So just like before, from the top, gonna go in, gonna look at it, and there it is. Perfect seal. Nice and flush into place. All right, gonna do that uh, five more times. So basically gonna take it out, open it up, set it in position, squeeze it all the way. Double check out to make sure. And do it, set, ready to go. All the way in. Nice and set. Gonna do the other side. Okay. Okay. Set And that's pretty much it. So that's my six pull-up studs in place. We'll check it from this side now as well. So from the top you have this one. And from the inside, looks good. Everyone has collapsed and nicely in place. Perfect. Now I'm just going to put some weather stripping glue on it just to assure that everything's good and then I'm going to drill out this one. Alright so this one is for the grommet. If you have the factory one it has that nice little grommet so this should fit in there perfectly. I'm just going to line this up to the middle and what I did was um. I got mine from the junkyard, so I know I need to cut a 26 millimeter hole. I actually have the hole that I cut out of the car from the junkyard. And what I did is I put the hole in place and then I put the tape to mark the depth. Because when this is spinning, of course, you can't see the numbers, All right? A couple of times to kind of set it. Now that gets it in place. That's the first hole. Now if you're going to do this with a hole saw that could probably work because it'll have the arbor in the middle and then you just have the one cutting through but since I'm using the stepper it's going to feel a lot more violent which is also good that I have that headliner down to give myself that extra room that I need. And that's going to be it. It also deburs the hole as it goes. And that should be a perfect fit for my grommet. Alright, so now I'm 
now our hole should be lined up perfectly nicely in place and the other ones are in place too my grommet hole is perfectly set as well that takes care of everything in position I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these down okay so these are the screws that came off of it from the junkyard if yours is just a domes that you bought and then you were doing this technique just make sure you have the proper size screw for it with a little flange so that'll help hold it in place so I'm just going to screw all these on basically the six once it came from the junkyard are using a 10 millimeter While I'm over here on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug the electrical in and run that wire through. All right. So that basically uh, just puts it back onto the base. You hear a little small click. I'm gonna press that all the way in. That sets it in place. I'm just gonna route the wire through the hole, the 26 millimeter hole that I did earlier. I'm gonna reach through. The window, I have my windows down to help me get to the pieces a little bit easier. Okay, uh, smarter move, unplug that because you got to plug it back, back up from the inside anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that. But that's why you watch these videos, right? So that's running it through. And this is the grommet that I was talking about, the natural one that comes with it. And it just sucks right into place and seals. Now what I may do is I'm gonna get my weather stripping and I'm gonna put that in there to help make sure that's really good and tight sealed. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in these other, or not plug in, screw in the other three from the other side. So we got one in the middle. All right, so before I cover this with the cover, I'm gonna get the weather strip glue and I'm gonna put that on that grommet hole and then put that on and then put the cover on. So, just gonna pull that back out. It is a nice tight fit as you see, but I'm gonna make sure it's even more secure. Gonna take a little bit of my weather strip. Black weather strip adhesive, 3M style. Just gonna put a little bead of it around the ball. There we go. And then it's got a nice little seal. It takes about 24 hours for this to cure properly. I'm not going to be doing any electrical just today so uh, this will get me set for now and then I don't have to pull the housing back off. I'm going to finish putting this together. So remember when I was talking about these edges here that clip onto the front, you also have these little hooks like this, this, and so on all the way back that go through the back rail. And so the way you're gonna put this on is you wanna clip in this front part, 
bring it down and then slide it back so that the hooks can grab it from the back. That way the screws that go in the back will fit perfectly in place. So we're gonna go ahead and get up on here. So as I set it in place, I'm bringing it forward so that the front hooks can grab it. Sliding those back. I can feel now if I pull it from the back that the back hooks are also in place. And that's got it gripped on completely. I'm gonna double check the other side real quick. Yep, slid into place and perfectly on the edge like I want it. All right, so you have your four screws that mount in the back. Now these are the ones that come with it. So making sure that those little catch pieces are locked in the front and locked in the back, you should be able to slide this screw straight through and just by hand, you can get it to set into position to which you see it's going in. So we're gonna do that for the two on this side, then we're gonna to move to the other side and do the same thing. That's gonna lock it in place. This is the uh, same T20 that you're using for your interior removable panel pieces. I mean, not panel, but the uh, visors that works on these factory bolts that go on the back end for this, from this Jeep Liberty. And that's tight in place. And again, perfectly set on the edge. I like it. Let me get the other side and then we're gonna get a nice wide view of this. So again, everything's locked in place properly. It won't rise up and it should set perfectly in position by being able to just take the screw straight in. And as you twist it by your fingers, if it's lined up just right, it'll actually start threading. That's how you know it. If you have difficulties, if it's not as easy as I'm doing it right now, that means it's not set in its proper position and you need to make sure that it's either pushed down or hooked in the front or whatever is necessary to make it so that it's an easy set. And it's only these four, so it is done and in place now. Looks good. And then pretty much that, there you have it. So I'm going to uh, wire this up. I'll put this together in another video how I'm going to wire the lights. And then I can aim the lights properly. But at this point, that's how we're gonna look at it. That's cool, right? Yeah, I like it. And that's how you install Jeep Liberty Renegade fog lights or roof lights on a Gen 5 Ford Explorer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.